Welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you. And Jonathan Mosley, who is uh, the button over here and put him on the air. Jonathan is the uh, is a talk show host cons- with the Conservative Commandos Radio, Tea Party activist, a criminal defense attorney. His website, CureSocialism.blogspot.com. Jonathan, welcome to the program. Hi, great to be here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I understand that you recently said that if Jesus were aware of, and or presumably he is, uh, what the what Pope Francis is saying about how trickle down economics is not supported by facts and and is a, you know a bad thing basically, that Jesus would be weeping. Do I have that right? Well, specifically that socialism has caught, co- in my view, depending on what you determine to be, has been has caused poverty, and and and, and for that reason, I don't think he'd be happy about more of it. Why is it then that the democratic socialist countries of the world are the richest countries? Well, I, I mean, I don't... They have I don't the lowest the poverty ri- the rates. Richest. Lowest poverty rates in the world. Denmark, Norway, uh, Sweden, uh, Finland, uh, Germany, France. Lowest poverty rates in the world in the democratic socialist countries. Well, I, I don't think that... Uh, I think the United States, other than the fact that we've run ourselves into... We death, have one of the worst that, poverty rates in the world since Reaganomics. We were pretty good before before 1980. We, we were in the top five or six, but we're now well, I think, out of I mean, 34 countries, we're number 34. The economic boom in American history and, uh, and, and doubled our tax revenue. But, the, but, the, but, I mean, the thing is, is that this is what... I know Reagan doubled I, I, taxes on working people. Is that what you're talking about? No, I, I don't think he did. Well, um, actually, he did, uh, yeah. The, go back and look at the, at the, at the uh, in 1982, actually. He doubled, literally doubled taxes on anybody who made, at that time, under $70,000 a year. I think he had cut taxes on everybody. But nope. The, but, but the, well, okay, but the thing is, is that um, socialism requires force. It requires government violence to make people um, conform, whereas capitalism, as I interpret it, um, is, is freedom and individual free will, which is what Christianity depends upon. Okay, so, so you start out, um, I'd love to get into those definitions, and perhaps we'll have, hopefully we'll have time. You start out with this quote from Luke, uh, chapter 12, Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. And he said to him, Man, who appointed me a judge or arbitrator over you? And then you say, in just one verse, we see that God rejects the left-wing Jesus Christ-supported socialism heresy. I'm guessing that you didn't read all of Luke chapter 12, because five lines later, um, God is speaking to this guy and says, uh, But God said unto them, Thou fool! This, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou have you provided? So it is with those who lay up treasures for themselves, such people are not rich toward God. Yes, because Jesus spoke to the individual of his responsibility to, to do, how to live with his own life. Right. But he didn't say, take it from one person to give it to another. And that's what I define socialism as. Um, should should a person uh, beware of, of of the lure of wealth and and be generous to others? Absolutely, we have Christmas coming up. Sure, people should give to the poor, but but Jesus didn't go grab the person and have his people you know pull you know pick his pocket. But he was not. No, but he was not. <laughs> no, actually, he, it, not only was he not a capitalist, but he said, "Remember when the rich guy came to him?" It's in Matthew. I I, I can't quote yeah. chapter and verse anymore. I used to be able to, actually. Um, you know, where the rich guy comes to him and says, how do I get into heaven? And he says, sell everything you own and give it to the poor, and then join me. I mean, it, it, here, here he is saying to a capitalist, stop being a capitalist, and you can go to heaven. You tell me, well, you're telling me, you're trying to tell me Jesus is a capitalist? Yeah, I mean, Jesus, Jesus was a carpenter. He ran a small business. Peter uh, was No, a Jesus was a preacher. Well, business. maybe, you know, when he was young, but, you know, what right. we know of his life, there's, there's no reference to that in the Bible. The, the Bible refers to him as, a, as basically a rabbi. He was a wandering minister. But he was a carpenter. He ran his own business. He, was a, he, he did carpentry. Where in the Bible high, does it say that? Which is kind of high-end in terms of the, the, the building. Where, the where in the Bible does it say that? Um, I, 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 I'd have to go look it up. But, I, okay. but the thing is that... Um, I, don't, I just don't recall any reference to Jesus running his own business, you know, buying nails, hiring people, firing people. You know, having a bank account, uh, st- storing up cash for for a rainy day. I just don't. I I don't see it there. What I well, see I, is Jesus saying to rich people, "You guys are screwed." You know, well, it, 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 a camel will go through the eye of a needle that, easier than you're going to get to heaven. 
But he did say that. But where do you get from that to government involvement? How, do, how does that relate to the government? Well, I don't think Jesus talked about government involvement. You know, the, 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 the guy came to him with a coin and said, should I pay my taxes? And, and Jesus said, Who's, whose picture is on that? And the guy said, Julius Caesar. And, G, and Jesus said, you know, get, render unto Caesar what is Caesar, and render unto God what is God. In other words, pay your taxes. So, no, he, uh, I, you know, I think if you want to make an argument, that's the only reference that I recall in the entire Bible, and I've read it four times from Genesis to Revelation, and, and used to preach it. Um, that's the only time I recall Jesus referring specifically to taxes and government in the first person with one single individual. And basically what he was saying was, pay your taxes. So I would say he was being supportive of socialism because the Romans at that time were actually supporting poor people. Well, he was saying don't break the law. The go- those taxes were also paid. To no, this guy wasn't and, asking and about and the law. Data. This guy was asking about paying taxes. Yeah, which was the law, but they also used that money to invade other countries, rape and kill people, and, and destroy whole countries. And, and Jesus and so said, I pay your taxes. Now, he did, yeah, he, he did. did, you can, you know, if you want to take Elaine Pagel's interpretation, and that of many good, good Christian scholars, uh, Jesus did argue that people should break the law. You know, uh, there were Roman laws that said that, you know, people wiped their butts with their left hand, and so the left hand was considered unclean. So you could, you could hit a person in the face with your right hand, legally, but you could not legally hit them with your left hand. It was against the law. And so Jesus said, if somebody strikes you on the left cheek, turn the right cheek to them. In other words, if they hit you with their right hand, then basically force them to hit you with your left hand. Force them to break the law. They can lose their Roman citizenship over that. Same thing with the walk the second mile. There were anti-exploitation laws that said that, that uh, Romans could, could have the, uh, the, the occupied people carry things for up to one mile, but more than that was considered exploitation. You could lose your Roman citizenship and go to jail. Jesus said, if somebody makes you carry something for a mile, carry it a second mile. Well, you carry it the second mile, that, that you're putting that person into jail. Same thing with the, the toga and robe thing. Um, you know, I, 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 we're running out of time. I don't want to do the, turn this into a Bible study, but I don't see any, I, I don't see how you could say that Jesus was not anything other than the original socialist. But the thing is, the rich, the rich young ruler didn't sell all he owned, and nobody, you know, he didn't sick his his band on him to beat him up and steal and steal it. He told him to sell everything he owned. He didn't do it, and right. Jesus just walked away. Right. He didn't force people to comply. He said he said every individual what they ought to do, but he didn't advocate one person forcing them. So to your your conception of freedom is where there is absolutely no force. This is a total libertarian argument. You're suggesting then that we should not have public roads because somebody has to pay for that, which is going to require force, that we should not have public schools, that we should not have public libraries, that we should not have, you know, pretty much anything. You want us to just go back to the jungle? No, I wouldn't take it to that total version. You had at the news somebody ripping off somebody else's um, picture and selling it at Walmart. That should be illegal. That's, that's, that's stealing. That's, uh, that's fraud. Um, and I think that there have to be laws so that... People are making voluntary choices when they purchase things. Then you're a socialist. No, I don't think that laws um, requiring honesty um, are the same thing. As but I'm talking about public infrastructure. How do we get public infrastructure without taxes? Taxes require you know guys with guns coming getting money from you. How do you do that? Or are you saying that there should be no taxes and therefore there should be no public infrastructure? No, I don't think that charity comes by taking it from one person. Do you think there should will. be any public infrastructure whatsoever? Should we have public roads? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, then you're a socialist, by your no, own definition. I, I that's, a, that's an expenditure of government. It's not stealing from one person to give to another. And I don't think... How is it that. not? I don't own a car. I don't use the roads. I use the metro system here in Washington, D.C., and I pay every time I use it. And wow. yet my tax dollars are going to pay for the roads. I, I, if you take a taxi to the airport, you might use the road. But that's, that's well. They're building a, they're building a subway out there actually right now. Uh, Jonathan Mosley, I, I, I hope to continue to continue this conversation with you some other time. It, it's right. been a great conversation. Uh, his website curesocialism.blogspot.com. Jonathan, thanks for dropping by. And Merry Christmas. Bye. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you too. This is the Tom Hartman program. And and happy holidays to everybody else. And happy flying spaghetti monster and everything. We'll be right back. 